we are on Belford Road in Webster County, Missouri. We're about five miles out of the town of Marshfield, Missouri. And we're coming up on the James River. And we'll cross over that and then we'll just be uh, a few hundred feet from the property itself, which has frontage on Belford Road as well as the James River. There's the James right there. Gorgeous river. This is what you would call a low water bridge. Mm -hmm. Looking up the James. And then obviously down river. This is a nice spot right here if, uh, if you want to do just a quick float or a beginner float for the kids or someone who hasn't floated much before. You can put in your canoe or your raft or your kayak right here at the river and then just take a, a short little 10 minute float, 20 if you go slowly, right down to your own property. So we'll cross the bridge. The road will curve to the left and we'll go up the hill. We get to the top of the hill, the road curves to the right, and the property begins on the right side of the road. Actually, there's a survey marker right there. This property has been recently surveyed, so that's done. There's an approach into the property right here. And that's looking down Belford Road. Okay. This is fenced at the road and gated. So you're welcome to put your own lock on there and be all set to go. Okay, so we've just pulled through the gate. I'll stop the truck for a moment and hop out. A little bit windy today, but otherwise it's a beautiful day. So we just pulled off Belford Road. We're on the property itself. This is tract two at James River Estates. It's, uh, I believe, about 3.3 acres in size. We've got phone uh, at the county road. We've got power crossing over the property a couple hundred feet in front of us. Private gated drive. Now this spot where we are right now is high and dry. It's completely out of the 100 year flood zone. It's easily big enough to build a, a large home. In a moment I'll hop back in the truck and we'll drive and the land will start to drop down. And that's when we enter the 100 year flood zone which you'll have adjacent to any, any named river, any major river. As I've said on a couple other videos, you actually can build in the 100 year flood zone. Uh, but if you're going to build a house or a large cabin, anything that needs a mortgage or might need a mortgage at some day, at some point, uh, you would have to have flood insurance for a bank to ever approve that. So other than just not being that bright to build in the 100 year flood zone. Economically, even if you don't get flooded, uh, it could be expensive. Flood insurance is expensive. Now we've had several people build, uh, not on these properties, these are new properties, but on river properties, we've had people build a main house out of the flood zone. Uh, and then a, a day cabin or a cabin on stilts in the flood zone, something that doesn't require a mortgage, something smaller. But uh, the bottom line is, it's uh, a, a river property that does have actual frontage and a nice big building spot out of the flood zone. So I'll hop back in the truck and we'll drive on down to the river. Just a gorgeous, gorgeous area. And this open pasture is beautiful as well. This could be... I, this could look just like a, a, a lawn. I mean, it's just gorgeous grass.
I think I said before, we're only about five miles outside of the town of Marshfield, uh, which is a nice uh, city. And we are not far from Springfield either, which is an extremely popular city, uh, growing by leaps and bounds. We'll just kind of slowly head toward the river and I'll keep the camera rolling and we'll see what we can see. So even where we are now, we're out of the 100 year flood zone. As we start to go down this hill, we're going to enter that, that flood zone. Now it would take a lot of water for it to get up even where we are now. Um, it's still not advisable to build anything you care too much about down here unless you elevated it. And now we'll get to this tree line and I'll, uh, I'll park right here and we'll walk to the water. So obviously a property boundary right there where the fencing is. And that runs all the way up to the county road. And as I walk over this way, you'll see another uh, line of T-posts. These do not have the barbed wire stretched on them yet. The guys haven't done that yet. We got tied up. Uh, with some other projects but you can see it's nice wide property it's common for river properties to be somewhat long and thin and this one uh, fits the bill on that but it's wide enough on on basically any part of it to give you uh, a really nice yard that looks like a walnut tree that the the guys have left in the middle I'm no deer expert, but I believe that looks like a deer bed at the base of that tree. Pretty little walnut tree. So let's walk on down to the water and have a look at the James River. Happens to be one of my personal favorite rivers in the Ozarks. The James is crystal clear almost all year. You'll find many different types of fish in here. The James River, uh, it flows west. We're in Webster County, it will flow west into Greene County and it makes up Lake Springfield, right in Springfield. And it continues to flow uh, to the south from there, down I believe through Stone County, uh, down toward Branson and empties into uh, the big lake down there. Here's a nice little shaded picnic type area. And actually I see walnut trees everywhere. I see walnut, sycamore. You'll find oak, of course, on this property. And I can see the river. It's about 100 feet in front of us. Now where we are right now, I would classify this as, as river bottom. And I would say there's a good chance that this gets wet uh, in the springtime. If we get a big rain and the river rises, this part would get wet. Beautiful gravel bar right here, wow. Now this is interesting. It looks like, well that's the James, obviously. And then right here it splits and about three quarters of it is on the far side of that little island. And then there's a little arm here and it looks like it joins back together. On this property on Tract 2, you actually own both sides of the river, which is pretty unusual for river properties. It makes it extra private. It means no one's ever going to build across from you on the river because you own that. And it also means, uh, apparently, you would own an island. <laughs> a little Ozark island right here with about uh, 
a dozen sycamore trees on it, and some walnut, two or three walnut trees. Kind of cool. So peaceful out here, just gorgeous. It's hard to believe that we're only about 30 miles from Springfield and we're out here on a unnamed river, peaceful as can be. I can see fish already. The James is just crystal clear. I'm looking down and I can see every little bit of gravel. I can see, I have no idea if, if they're being picked up in the camera, but there are some bass right there. If the video stops, it means I fell in. <laughs> I'm trying to navigate this fallen sycamore tree. There we go. So there you can see the gravel bar on the other side. Looking down river, and then obviously looking across the river. I've never been across the river. Feel free to explore that. And looking up the river. Very, very cool property. Wow. This would be great for a family. Uh, this section of the James River, even the young kids could float in this. Make sure they have life jackets just for safety. I'll say that because I have a little six-year-old and if she has the choice, she'd hop right into this and never think about a life jacket, but uh, when you're canoeing or kayaking, it's very smart to have for the little ones especially, if not everybody. This gravel bar is pretty neat. We found a couple arrowheads out here. I don't know if we found any on track two specifically, but we found a couple uh, arrowheads. Just an amazing property. I go nuts about these uh, these ones at the James River Estates because they're just just <laughs> almost every single day we're we're calling endless realtors and property owners and we're trying to track down river properties and you just can't find stuff on the James. You just can't can't find anything reasonable on the James. Webster County um, doesn't have zoning, which means you can build out here without permits. As soon as you get into Greene County, man, you've got restrictions on everything. It continues in Stone County and Taney County. So there, there is a very, very limited section of the James River where you can actually get out and, and do what you like and not have the, the zoning restrictions. Great property for investment. Use this for 20 years. Take your kids out here all the time and, and have fun. Uh, and I can't even imagine what a, a river property on the James River, already surveyed, is going to be worth in 20 years. Great area for hunting as well. Three acres is not the biggest piece in the world if you're a hunter, but I'll tell you what, there, we see deer in this pasture, uh, an insane amount of turkeys the guys have seen out here. In fact, when they were brush hogging, uh, track two, I believe, just a little while ago, uh, a few weeks ago, I came back and they had skipped a big section, uh, just a round area, looked like about a, maybe a tenth of an acre, and I said, what's up with that? And they said, well, there's a, a mother turkey on her nest right there, so we couldn't mow it. I said, yeah, <laughs> that makes sense. So there, there are turkey, deer out here, so private and secluded, but you're just, you're close to Springfield, you're close to Marshfield. I could go on half the day about, about these tracts out here, and this is a nice one. But I believe I've probably rambled on for about 15 minutes already, so I'll go ahead and stop the video. But that's tract two at the James River Estates. Super nice property, super rare property. Frontage on the clear James River, close to Springfield, out of Marshfield, but so private. Beautiful property.